want to unlock the signature sounds of the man in black? No, I said man in black. <laughs> if so, grab your axe and stick around for this lesson. Today I'm going to be showing you how to unlock the sounds of the great Luther Perkins from the Tennessee Three, Johnny Cash's band that he recorded with on the Sun Records label. This pattern we're going to be showing you today can be found on Folsom Prison Blues, Get a Rhythm, and all of those great Johnny Cash early hits. Even if you've barely held a guitar, this short lesson is going to give you the basics of Perkins style, plus two variations for all of you advanced and intermediate pickers out there. By the end of the video, you'll not only know how to replicate this sound on the electric guitar, but you'll be able to apply it to acoustic guitar, giving you a full palette to apply this style of rhythm guitar to almost any Americana or root style of music. Plus, if you stick around for the end of the lesson, I'm going to give you one signature trick that's going to make you sound like a pro country guitar player in no time. Alright my friend, enough yakking, let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm assuming if you're sitting here watching this lesson, you're familiar with Luther Perkins' style on those early Johnny Cash records, or at least the multitudes of players that have replicated his style in the decades since those records were made. So let's go ahead and just start breaking down that pattern right now. So the anatomy of Luther's style is actually pretty simple as far as the right hand goes. If you're playing an E chord or a chord with a root note that's on the low E string, the pattern for your right hand is going to be the 6th string, 4th string, 5th string, 4th string. Now with that you've pretty much got most of the style. Now for our A chord, it's actually going to be a little bit different. For anything with a root note on the A string, we're going to be going 5, 4, 6, 4. So that includes our A chord and our B7 chord. And you'll notice for my B chord, I'm moving my middle finger down to the second fret of the low E string. So to put all of them together, if we were just playing them in a row, So there you have it my friend, the anatomy of the Luther Perkins style. Now you're probably saying, hey, that doesn't quite sound like Luther's guitar playing. So there's one last element we need to talk about in order to get this style down. We need to palm mute with our right hand here. And the way that I like to do it is just to rest the fleshy part of my hand right here, right on the strings where they meet the bridge. So you don't want to put your hand too far out because then you don't get any notes. We want to just barely dampen those notes where you can still hear that ringing through. So there it's open, palm muted, and now over muted. So that's the sweet spot right there. Now the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to the anatomy of Luther Perkins style is the actual tone that you're going to get on your electric guitar. A lot of you may notice that if you're just plugged straight into an amplifier, a clean guitar tone doesn't quite have the sound that that Luther Perkins style does, right? So on those early Sun Records, Sam Phillips, the engineer and producer at Sun Records, added some tape delay and some reverb. So I think if you're going to experiment with this style, you should definitely turn that reverb knob up on your amp a little bit and invest in a slapback delay pedal or a tape delay emulator pedal. Now, if you listen to the tone that I have here on the guitar, when I hit one of those notes, da -da, you can almost hear that, that the delay is very short. I've got mine set to about 75 milliseconds right now. Some like to go longer to almost get a da da kind of sound. So you can kind of experiment with the delay uh, tone yourself, or excuse me, the delay length yourself to kind of get the tone that you want out of the instrument on this style of music. I also have a little bit of uh, distortion on my guitar right now. It's just a Tube Screamer emulator in Logic right now, but when I'm playing live, I use a Tube Screamer pedal to get a little bit of grunge and drive out of the tubes. That's not absolutely necessary, but a lot of modern players like to do that too. Before we move on to anything else, one last thing I want to say. Those patterns that I mentioned there for the right hand actually apply to any chords that you want to play on the guitar. Most of the time when we're playing rhythm, the root note is going to be on either the E string or the A string. So those alternating patterns that I showed you there work for almost any chord inversion. Say if you're playing a C chord or a G chord or anything like that. These also work particularly well for bar chord shapes because then we can keep the same tonality that root, root, fifth root, 
for the E shape or the root fifth, fifth, fifth kind of pattern for the, the chord inversions that involve a root note on the A string. So just keep that in mind that bar chord shapes will keep the same tonality of these E, A shapes when you're kind of transposing them to other keys on the guitar. All right, my friend, you should have the basic anatomy of the Luther Perkins style down now. So I'm going to cue up some chord changes at 220 beats per minute and feel free to play along with me. If it's a little too fast, don't hesitate to slow down this track with the gear icon below. Okay, my friend, there is the basic pattern at 220 beats per minute. Now I'm going to show you one slight variation that modern players like to use. This isn't one that I think Luther actually used on a lot of his recordings, but I think people opted for this pattern because they were kind of combining in their mind some of the various rhythmic elements they were hearing in those early Johnny Cash recordings. So what I'm talking about here is what I like to call the bum ditty pattern. <laughs> And just to show you that, it looks kind of like this. So that basic pattern, we're just going. But for the bum ditty, it's one, two, and three, four, and. Now I think there are a few things that kind of went into people opting for this bum ditty pattern. One, they were kind of conflating some of Johnny Cash's rhythm strums on the guitar plus the train beat of the drummer, thinking that Luther Perkins actually played that upstroke on beats two and four. Plus, Luther Perkins' slapback delay sound kind of gives the effect of bum ditty, right? If you opt for that longer tape delay, like I said a while ago, you'll actually hear two different notes even though he wasn't phrasing them with his right hand. But that being said, lots of folks employ the bum ditty pattern here today, and I think it's one that you should definitely practice. So once again, here's a version of the bum ditty pattern at 220 beats per minute. Feel free to follow along and slow it down if you're having too much trouble. <laughs> All right, my friend, that only leaves us with one more pattern to master this Luther Perkins style of rhythm guitar. This is one that I've kind of opted to call the strum ditty. So you're actually going to do the single picked note first, then the single note next, and then on the upstroke, you're going to lift your palm off the guitar and get a little bit of a strum in there. This is one that I see a lot of acoustic guitar players using if they opt to go for this Luther Perkins style on guitar. It's almost like a hybrid of what Johnny Cash was playing on the acoustic guitar and what Luther was playing on the electric guitar. Like I said, not a totally authentic Luther Perkins style pattern, but it's one that's evolved out of this sound of the early Johnny Cash Sun records. So I think it's definitely worth learning, especially if you're gonna opt to play this on the acoustic guitar. All right, my friend, I'm gonna cue up a version of this one, the strum ditty at 220 beats per minute. Feel free to follow along, slow it down with the gear icon if you need.
All right, my friend, if you stuck around this long, I know exactly what you're waiting for, that super secret trick that I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. So a lot of folks, including Luther himself, when they were going from the turnaround, that B7 back to the E chord at the top of like the second or third form, whatever the repeat happens to be, there's kind of a small bend that you can do to kind of signal that we've come back around to the top of the form again. So let me show you that real quick. So here's that little bend lick that I'm talking about. So all you're doing is just kind of grabbing the second fret and choking it, sometimes people call it, right? And I like to pick kind of behind the pickup. Uh, and it, it doesn't actually take as much pressure as you think. You know, you shouldn't be bending all the way up to like a G natural note. It's kind of somewhere between an F sharp and a G. So let me put that in context for you. All right, my friend, there you have it. The complete formula for the Luther Perkins style of rhythm guitar so you can sound exactly like those early Johnny Cash Sun records. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you have fun messing around with this one. Like I said at the beginning, this isn't just for electric guitar players. I know all of you out there that watch the channel are mostly acoustic guitar players, but I hope that you can either feel inspired to pick up that telly that's sitting in your closet collecting dust or take this pattern and put it on the acoustic guitar. I've found a lot of use with this pattern playing with my bluegrass band when we do covers of Johnny Cash tunes because everybody always wants to hear a Johnny Cash tune, right? I think it's gonna be a really versatile pattern for anyone that plays acoustic or electric guitar, especially if you're in the Americana, rockabilly, bluegrass or country styles of music. Okay, my friend, thank you so much for checking this video out. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button below and give us a like if you enjoyed today's content and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.